please be quiet? Can you, can you, can you guys, uh, can you pause? Can you at least be quiet for two seconds? Thank you! Hello, welcome everyone to the Delmar Show. Now we all know who this guy here is, right? Of course we do. It's Mickey Mouse, Walt Disney's mascot, the everyday mouse, and quite possibly one of the most recognized cartoon characters in all of American animation. And because of his fame, being Mickey Mouse, there are dozens upon dozens of Mickey Mouse games out there on the market. There have been games based on Mickey Mouse since the days of the Game & Watch handhelds. Probably the most famous Mickey Mouse games I could think of are the Illusion games on the Genesis, and for a more recent example, Epic Mickey, which is one of my all-time favorite games. However, today's game comes from the year 2000 back on the Nintendo 64. That game being... Mickey Speedway USA. Now, just by saying the title itself, you can already tell be like a Mario Kart-esque clone, but what's interesting to note is that this game was made by Rare. Yeah, the same people who made games like Donkey Kong Country and Banjo-Kazooie. And the strange part is that there are two other Mickey Mouse racing games on the Game Boy Color made by Rare as well. Kinda makes sense, I mean, you did good with Diddy Kong Racing, which I finally found after all these years, and I love it still. Anyway, back to this game! So is this just a typical Mario Kart-esque clone, or did Will put some special unique touches on this game? I don't know, just take a look. You know, watching this opening cinematic takes me right back. I was a big fan of Mario Kart 64 at the time, so I played a lot of racing games back then. Mine is the realistic ones. They suck. And even if I knew most of these games were going to rip off Mario Kart in some fashion or another, as long as the races were still fun, that's all that matters. Oh, I just started racing. W what the? Why were you getting a computer monitor? W what's going on? Oh, that's right! This game, like Diddy Kong Racing, has a story in it. Kinda weird, I, I don't remember there being one, but oh well. So one day, Mickey's checking on his dog Pluto when he sees a note hanging on the doghouse from the weasels. Sadly, not as awesome as the ones from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. The note reads, Hey Mouse, we have your dog in his diamond collar. Just try to catch us. <laughs> Remind me again why I waste two grand on the dog collar? Actually, the collar's fake, but yes, not tell the weasels that. Shh, they're having such a good time. So Mickey calls his friends up, including Pete for some reason, and tells them all to meet him at Ludwig's shop so they can chase the weasels down with race cars. Which is all fine and good, but wouldn't it be easy to just call the police and have them to send out wanted posters around for Pluto, around the states, or, you know what, it's Disney logic, we can't question it. But I wish we can. If you played Mario Kart 64 before, nothing much has really changed in terms of gameplay in Mickey Speedway USA. You got different circuits to race on, three difficulty modes, four when you unlock mirror mode, and different race tracks that are fun to race on as your favorite Disney characters. The drivers are, of course, Mickey and friends, and they all have different stats which makes each racer unique. And just like in Mario Kart, you can use several different items to slow the racers down. The baseball is just like the Green Cooper Show, and could go bouncing off the walls. The RC car and RC plane, which is the equivalent of the Red Cooper Show. Green Goo is pretty much the same as the bananas. The bubble spray, which is... Exactly like the star. Okay, okay, I apologize if I keep comparing this game to Mario Kart over here, but when it comes to licensed games, there's not really much of a difference between the two. Does that make it automatically bad? Of course not. As long as the game is fun and provides some differences from Mario Kart, that's all that matters. So what's different from it than Mario Kart? As you win more races, you get to unlock different cheats and some new drivers to drive, but there's one unlockable racer that's a bit confusing to get. 
that one being Huey. You will have to have a copy of the Game Boy Color version of this game and attach it to the transfer pack for the console. And done correctly, you can unlock Huey. So wait, does that technically make this game the predecessor to those DLC packs? However, since I don't own the Game Boy Color version or the transfer pack, I can't really show you guys any footage of Huey in the N64 game. I do indeed apologize for this. Now let's talk about the tracks themselves. Since this is Mickey Speedway USA, all the tracks are based on states and cities in the United States. And to be fair, most of them don't get that bad. Las Vegas has this huge desert area and buildings based on its counterpart. New York looks like a Disney version of New York. They even have Lady Liberty shoved in it. And by that I mean you only see it for a few seconds when you get near the finish line. Everglades has a swamp area pretty well handed. And Washington has you racing outside and inside the White House. However, some tracks don't really carry the correct theme for a city's counterpart. For example, Chicago's track takes place in a sewer-like environment. Okay, I've never been to Chicago before, but when I hear Chicago, I think of large buildings, skyscrapers, suburbia, traffic, the musical, that weird metallic bean sculpture, and sewers is what they thought would be the best for the Chicago track? I don't know, seems kind of out of place to me. Or how about Philadelphia? It's just a harbor-like track. Like with Chicago, I wish they would have thought of a more creative ideal track for Philadelphia instead of just making it a harbor level, but that's just me nitpicking there. Overall, the tracks are okay. I have to admit though, the soundtrack itself is quite upbeat. All the track themes sound different, and while most of these tunes are forgettable, some of them are actually quite funky. Yes, I said funky, shut up. My favorite one being the track for San Francisco. While the music does sound good, the character's voices just blocks it all off completely. I mean, yeah, it's a Mickey Mouse game, so they're going to have the characters talk and all. And while I don't mind that, they talk all the time. Hey, they don't talk every single second, but most of the time they just repeat the same lines over and over again. But to be fair, I don't really see this as a bad thing in a kid's game, so... I'm a nitpicker, deal with it! Now keep in mind, it's been a long while since I played this game, hence why I'm revisiting it. And as I was playing this, I discovered something that I never found out as a kid. You know how in Diddy Kong Racing there are hidden boss keys in different tracks? Well here, there are hidden engine parts in four different tracks, but they're a little tricky to find. I especially love this hidden part between these two cliffs. Seriously, what six-year-old kid will ever look at this and say, Gee, I wonder if I can go for that wall over there. I know technically that is impossible, but still, that would be really cool! Holy freaking crap. And what do you get when you find all the engine parts? You unlock the last circuit in the game, and it's by far the most hardest and the most challenging circuit in the game. The previous circuits were standard and actually quite easy to beat, but these last four tracks range from generally easy to holy crap, why do I keep falling in the water? But then there's the final track, Colorado. Oh, how this track haunts me so. I beat the game! Yeah! Oh, yeah! I, I beat the game! I beat the 
game. Come on, Nate. Come on. Oh, oh, wait, I just remembered. I got two extra modes to beat the game on and plus mirror mode. Crap! I have to admit, even after all these years, this game is still fun. The nostalgic memories of playing this back then as a kid and the tracks themselves aren't that bad either. But this game is pretty much your generic Mario Kart clone. The items are easily comparable to the items used in Mario Kart. The characters never stop talking. Okay, game past that. And it's a very basic racing game at best. But that doesn't make the game bad automatically. The music is pretty catchy at times. Graphics, well, it may look dated to some people, are still pretty to look at. And for those who do like a challenge, the last race circuit is fairly hard. Not even your average Mario Kart track is as hard compared to it. Overall, if you have a kid who likes Disney and Mario Kart, chances are they'll like this game as well. So, on the Mullins grayscale, I give this game a B-. And that's all the time we have for today, folks. So, if you'd like to share your thoughts on today's game, just comment below. And if you do want to get this game, it's actually fairly easy to find and it's pretty cheap. Prices for it on eBay can go around from $5 to around $15. And there is a Game Boy Color version of this game. I do not own it however, so that's something for a future episode or a mini bonus video of some kind for me to do in the future. Now if you excuse me, commence head bang. Hey, thanks for watching this video, and since I finally discovered how to work annotations, I'm going to recommend two videos for you guys. If you would like to see the previous Dharma Show review, just click the pretty image of me holding the lighter, and also if you would like to see one of my Thomas parodies, or Thomas comedies as I call them, just click the image of Gordon looking at a wall. The reason why I'm linking this video is cause sometime next week, I don't know, maybe next week or sometime later this month, who knows, I'll be uploading a new Thomas comedy. I mean, it's been like, what, a whole year or maybe more since I made the last one? Time does fly by. Oh, and if you like my videos, then subscribe, and um, share if you like, and um... um I'm just gonna leave this opening for a while, and um... Bye!